Can I ask everyone to stand as we give reference to the Word of God? We're going to read Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 9, and then we're going to try to unpack the message. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out to the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Lord, thank you that this short passage of Scripture is your encouragement to us today. It is you who are telling each and every one of us, regardless if it is the storm that affected us or if it's a storm in our personal lives, thank you, Lord, that you have indeed seen the misery of your people. Thank you, Lord, that you have heard our cries, that you are concerned about our suffering, and that you have come down to rescue us. Lord, thank you that you desire to bring us to your promised land. Lord, bless your people today. Lord, what a message of hope that you bring to us as your people. Lord, in all our concerns, Lord, I pray that you, as we surrender it to you, Lord, silence our hearts and our minds so that we can fully focus on your word that leads to life. Your word is a lamp to our feet that guides us. And Lord, you said it also in your word. In John 10, 10, the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but you have come to give us life in life in abundance. Lord, we receive life through your word today. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may now take your seats. Today we're going to go through um, Exodus, and this is the story where the Lord God reveals himself to Moses. And maybe you're familiar with this story. Um, this is the story where for the first time in Moses' life, he, he sees a divine encounter through the burning bush. And the burning bush was a, a way for the Lord to reveal who he was to this man, Moses. You have to understand, Moses was, at, during this time, was already seasoned in his age. He was already, the Bible says, most probably around eight years old. And he was already in a, a seasoned old man. Not only that, he was a shepherd during that time, and he was leading the sheep here in Mount Sinai. And as he was tending the flock, the Lord suddenly appears to him, and there is already a purpose for the appearance of God to Moses. And this was the reason. He wanted to rescue the people that was oppressed. And so guess what? Ito po ang reply ni Moses. And I want to I wanna first say this. We have a message of hope. And this is what we were saying, no? what the testimony of Charles, every time we preach the word, it's a message of hope for those who need hope. Kaya tayo pumupunta ng church, hindi lang para ma-bless, but we need hope in our lives, right? And the word of God leads us to that. But this is the reality. The hope that we receive when we do our devotion, when we read our Bible, is also the hope that people out there need. So the hope that they need will not go to them unless there is a messenger. So I'd like to start the message with this idea. God's message of hope needs a messenger. So look at the person beside you, left and right. Yan ang mga messengers ni Lord. So tap the person to your right, say mo, you're a messenger. Tell that person, you're a messenger. Oh. Tell the person to your left, say mo, you're a viber. Oh. Uh, you're a messenger of God's hope. So today we go through the story of Moses. And so, ito yung start, no? The Lord appears to him and tells him, I want you to go. Say that with me. Go. Verse 10. So now, go, I'm sending you. The plan of God was to send this man, old man Moses, to go and save his people, to be the deliverer of these people who are oppressed, to deliver people from their current situation of being slaves. So the instructions of the Lord was, now go, I'm sending you. We are people who are sent. No? Ito po talaga ang buhay kristyano. We are people who are sent to this world out there who needs hope. 
Verse 10 says, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And this is such a clear instruction. Wala pong paligoy-ligoy si Lord. He gives us this clear instruction. And so the result of the instruction should be, okay, Lord, send me. But just like most of us, Moses went through a lot of questions, concerns. And ito po ang discuss natin today. The challenges where Moses encountered so much questions and doubts even to himself that the Lord addressed. Verse 11, he says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Sino ba ako, Lord? Who am I? I'm such an insignificant person. And that's what he felt. As we go through this idea of questioning who he was, you have to understand the world we live in today says this, that the messenger's message is dependent on the credibility of the messenger. Ganun ang mundong ginagalawa natin. Pag meron tayong binigay na message, ang credibility of the message is dependent on who we are. Tama ba? When we say something, ang tanong nila, pagkakatiwalaan ko ba itong nagsabi nito? And so this is what was in the mind of Moses. Who am I means I'm not qualified to be the messenger. And who was Moses? Let's try to unpack who Moses was. During this time, again, he was already eight years old. He was working for his father-in-law. He was a shepherd. Imagine, no? Eight years old na, he was working as a shepherd to his father-in-law's sheep. What else? Hindi lang po yung current situation niya that was parang low credibility. He was asked to face the the pharaoh, the head of the country that was oppressing the people. So his current situation was not qualified. Di ba? Parang si, sino yun? Bakit ko siya kakausapin? There's a shepherd that wants to talk to you. Not only that, his past does, does not qualify him does not qualify him to also represent the nation of Israel. Ano ba yung past niya? Si Moses, if you backtrack in the story, number one, we know this, he actually murdered someone. You remember that story? He murdered someone, no? maybe accidental, but he killed one of the Egyptians. And because of that fear of being captured, what did he do? He was also a fugitive. He did something wrong and he ran away from what he has done. Credible ba yon to be a representative of a message of God? No, the past of Moses was zero credibility to represent him to speak to this Pharaoh. What else? Not only that, he was also confused on who he was. Yung identity niya, sino ba talaga siya? Uh, let's also try to backtrack. You remember when Moses was born, during that time, pagka po merong male child, they would kill this, this boy. Kasi ayon na nilang dubame ang Israelites. They were getting stronger and stronger and that's why they were enslaved. So what the mom did was to send his son via Pasig River. Pinaanod niya hanggang dumating doon sa Pharaoh's uh, sister. So the Pharaoh's sister said, Ang cute nung bata, alagaan ko to. And guess what happened? Sabi niya, ano sinabi na may dumating na isang Hebrew girl, sabi niya, do you want me to look for someone to take care of your new adopted child? Ano sabi niya? Sige, kanino pinaalaga si Moses? Sa? Mami niya. So now he goes back to his household. Hindi niya alam kung ano nangyari. He grows up knowing that he's only there with a Hebrew mom, but really he's an Egyptian, but really he's not. He was an identityless person. He wants to equate with the Egyptians, but also he's a Hebrew. So he's not, he doesn't know kung kanino ba siya nagbebelong. And now this great God reveals this mission to him and tells him, I want you to go and talk to the Pharaoh. The question of Moses of who I am is actually a very real question to him. Because if you look at his entire life, you would actually say he is truly not qualified for the job. Why would God choose this person? Why would God choose this 
old shepherd who actually ran away for 40 years and now is being asked to be the deliverer of the people of God. You know, our past, I want to say this, does not determine our participation in the kingdom of God. Nor our present does not disqualify us from participating in God's work. I'd like you to try to fast forward what happens. The past of Moses is actually a setup and a preparation of what he will do for the people of God. Again, I want to ask, what was his profession? He was a? Lord, maukuha na nila ito. Malapit na. He was a shepherd. He actually ran away and was out of Egypt for 40 years. Imagine, no? Everything about, about the past of Moses was what he will do for the Lord. He would be the shepherd as they exit out of Egypt. Galing ni Lord. That every part of our lives in the past, good or bad, he can use it for the present. So look at the people around you. Look at that. Sabi mo sa kanya, your past does not define you. Sabi mo sa kanya. Uh, in Tagalog, lipast ka na. No? Medyo gising ka ng konti. Our past and our current situation does not determine our participation in the kingdom of God. And so this continuous talk between him and the Lord. No, Lord, um, qualified ba ako? So when we jump to verse chapter 4, we will see more doubts from Moses. Moses in verse 1 says, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say the Lord did not appear to you? That's a valid question. Lord, and I think a lot of us go through this challenge. No? What if, yes, I believe you, Lord, but what if I share you to someone, they will not believe me? Ba? That's actually a very valid question that it's our belief in God that we're trying to tell others that's our biggest concern. Will they truly believe that I have you in my life? This was the question of the Lord, of Moses to the Lord. What if I'm not a credible spokesperson for you? He doubted, and I want to say, he did not doubt who God was, but he doubted his capacity and capability to speak in behalf of God. Then the Lord said to him, what is it in your hand? This is a great question to ask all of us today. Ano ba ang nasa kamay mo? What is it in your hand? And Moses said, a staff. And this is his reply. A shepherd's staff is actually an old wood. It's something that you can actually pick up from somewhere. It's an old wood that you can use to lead the sheep. There's, there's no height requirement. It can be actually a long staff. It can be a short staff. If you Google staffs, Shepherd staff, usually it has an arc so that it could pull the, sh the sheep's neck going back. To be honest, wala pong saisay or walang halaga ang shepherd staff. It was nothing. I actually found the wood. I was looking for uh, a similar staff. And it was just something like this. No? Old wood, soaked in water, dirty. It's priceless. It's, it, it doesn't even have a price. I can throw it and then find one new tomorrow. And the Lord says, Ano bang meron ka? Sabi niya, Lord, ito lang. Moses' reply was not just saying that I have a staff. What Moses was saying is, I actually have nothing. This does not have any value for me to convince a Pharaoh that I'm letting and bringing out my people. Wala pong saisay to, Lord. This was his reply. This stuff does not mean anything for the mission that you're giving me. You know, during the storm, a lot of times we think about how to respond to the needs of others. And I'm not sure if it's just me, but Ako, no, during this time, sabi ko kay Pam, sana pa lang sa sakya natin, pick up. 
Tapos sobrang taas. Nakaya natin dumaan ng Araneta, Banawe, tapos mag-aano ako, mag magsusuta ko, tapos lulusong ako sa tubig, lalanguin ko yung mga, sasabihin ko sa mga members natin, sakay na kayo. Tapos feeling ko parang ako si Gerard Anderson, yung parang ganun, yung parang, yung, you will rescue people out of, and sabi ko, I need this and that, I need a speedboat, I need a, uh, dock seat, kailangan ko si Doc TJ sa tabi ko, para may, why am I saying this? A lot of times when we are confronted with a huge task, oh, this is the car that I wanted to have pala. It's a car during the day, pero it's also 4x4 four four during the, ano, parang, <laughs> let's go! Parang gano, no? Parang rescue tayo! Oh, di ba? I'm saying this because a lot of times when we see a huge task in front of us, personal or for others, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, we always focus on what we do not have. Parang lagi tayong, ah, kung meron ako nito, magagawa ko to. If I only had this, I'll be able to do what you're asking me to do, Lord. If Moses said, Lord, if I, if, if I had a good background, we always and most of the time focus on what we don't have. And that's the same reason why a lot of us are hesitant to take part in what the Lord is doing. Before I entered full-time ministry, People would tease me, uh, even with friends from Cebu who are actually here. Ano sila, no? Sabi na, oh, ah, baka tinatawag ka na ni Lord, mag full time, gano'n, gano'n. Like I said, hindi, tsaka na, pagka meron akong time, maybe pag nakaipon na ako, and then I will help, and then I'll do more. I've noticed that, and this is such an encouragement for me today, that I also want you to bring home. I've noticed that even with the little that we have, the Lord can use us. Even with a, such as insignificant thing that we have, the Lord can use us. And so in the kingdom of God, it's not what we don't have, but it's what we have and who we have. That's the presence of the Lord in our lives. This is the mindset that the kingdom requires of us. The little that we have, we surrender to God. Kaya sabi ni Lord, no, what do you have? Sabi niya, I only have this stick, this staff. And the Lord said to Moses, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. And he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And this is funny because whenever me, whenever I catch snakes, I catch it by the head. No? Pag may nakita kong ahas, nung the other day, sa may python. Python. I caught it by the... I just laid the hands on it, Lord. Paalisin mo. No? People would catch it by the head. Why? Because the safest way to catch snake is by the head. Kasi hindi ka niya ma... Ano? Kasi wala siyang kamay, so hindi niya kayang gawin sa iyan. Di ba? But the Lord tells... Moses, I like this. The Lord tells Moses, catch it by the tail. Do you want to know why? Because even in the most dangerous way, the Lord will be the one to deal with it. Sabi niya, catch it by the tail. Nung hinawa ka ni Moses dun sa tail, naging stick ulit. No? Naging staff. This, verse 5, this said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to you. The first point I'd like to share with you is this. God can use who we are and the little that we have to bring hope to others. God can use everything about our past, no matter how dark, how broken it is, he can use that in the little that we have today so that we could bring hope to others. And I like this because now at, I think we're almost full capacity. You know? This is around 600 yung sitting capacity. I wanna, I'm encouraged today that there are 600 qualified people because, it's, because it is the Lord who qualifies us to bring a message of hope. No? Tingnan mo yung mga katabi mo. Tingnan nyo, tingnan nyo. Yan. Qualified yan. No? Hindi man sa Mr. Pogi, qualified yan to be a messenger of God. 
it doesn't matter who we were in the past and what we have, that we can be used by God to bring a message of hope. Verse 5, this, he was pertaining to, if you look at verse 5, this pertains to the staff. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord has appeared to you. I put here a statement, this blank is so that they may believe the Lord. So the question is, in this blank, the answer to that blank is what you currently have. Sabi ni Lord, ba? What is in your hand? I can use that so that they will know who I am. The little that we have can be led to know who God is. Let me tell you a story. So last Wednesday, after the storm, we were coordinating in our as a team. We decided to bring uh, food, no? hot meals, to those who are, at least for the members who were badly affected who lived in San Juan. We were limited by the territory. We wanted to make sure, and most of them were students, binahayumbay, they lost a lot of things. So there were a hundred, it was a list of a hundred, parang ganun, no? a hundred um, people that we needed to, tama ba? But, so we, we needed to visit a handful of people. And so we called on a few volunteers, nagulat kami, uh, everyone was here on a Thursday afternoon. We wanted to bring at least dina sila mag isipin yung dinner nila. Kakain na lang sila. That was the idea. And we could pray for them. Ngayon, nagpasobra tayo ng konte, So that, the idea was, itong meal na to, kunwari, lima sila sa household, will give them ten so that they can decide who to give it to na kapitbahay nila na we can also pray for. So that was the plan because we only had a limited time and only limited food that we had. So we were mobilized. We are around nine teams of four to five people in each. We went around. And so yung team ni Pastor Alan, hindi nila napansin, they only had six one-piece chicken left. Yung six one-piece chicken na left, wala na ring water. Naubos na kasi yung volunteer na nagadad na uhaw ininom niya yung para doon sa nasalanta. Pero okay lang, no? Finor give na namin sila. No? The six chicken McDo, sabi nila, who do we bring it to? Wala na, na, na ano na nila, na bigay na nila doon sa list ng pupuntahan nila. Ang dami na rin nilang napag-pray, ang dami na rin nilang na-bless, ang dami nilang nakilalang bago. But they now had six left. And one of them who, were, who works for San Juan Medical, who's actually one of our leaders, Brenda Lau, sabi niya, actually, meron akong pwedeng dalawin. Malapit lang dito. She's my office, office mate. She just finished her post-op. So imagine nun, kaka-opera lang, tas nabaha pa. How many of you know that's really a hassle? So they wanted to go. Sabi nila, what if kulang? What if this is not enough? What do we do now? We only had six left. And so sabi nila, wag na lang, kainin na lang natin. Hindi nila sinabi yun. So they decided to go. And this is what is amazing. When they got there, ang tanong nila, oh, we just want to visit you. Kamusta yung kayo? Anything that we can help? Uh, there's a member who donated so much medicine para sa naba, so we wanted to distribute that properly. And this is what she said. Sabi niya, actually, uh, okay naman kami, pero syempre hirap, bagong opera and all. Uh, sabi, ilan kayo? So lahat sila, nagpe-pray na sila, nagsispeak na sila, na, nag, nagpe-pray na sila, sabi, Ako, baka kulang to, saan tayo pupunta, walang ano, bi, mahirap pumunta ng restaurant. Guess how many yung kailangan nila na meal? Ang corny niyo naman kausap. <laughs> uh, Seven. De, joke lang. Imagine, no? The last six went to a family of six. And we were, sabi lang namin, Lord, Thank you. That the little that we have will go to the right person who needs a prayer and hope. We were so amazed. We were so, uh, we were so happy that we were able to do this. But the work does not end. No, and dami pa po nating members who are actually going through a lot of, um, a lot of challenges. I think I guess isa lang yung regret namin. Imagine, no, we had 400 one piece McDo in all na nag-deliver. Ang regret lang namin, naamoy namin siya, but never namin siyang natikman. <laughs> Pero okay lang. Oo, okay lang. Kasi okay naman kami. The little that we have, the Lord can use 
to bring hope to others. Amen? Another story, and not related to the storm that happened recently. I had coffee with Tito Bonnie and Tita Stella. Uh, and when we were having coffee, uh, we had lunch and coffee, and we were talking about them. No, you have to understand, Tito Bonnie has been part of this church for the longest time, and he his ministry has been wanting to um, share the kingdom mindset. What does that mean? The ways of the Lord in the business world. Yan talaga yung ano, mission niya. Ang, ang idea niya is, if only our businessmen would meet God personally, they would do business with integrity. And it is the Lord who will take care of their concerns. So yun lang yung message niya. He was able to write a book. Dami na nitong natulungan. Da, and I, I see a lot of people who have been helped by Tito Bonnie and sila RC. Yung talagang na coach, na pa, sila Alvi. Yung he really spent time. He had one message: the kingdom of God. And imagine this this man who's already almost he's the younger brother of Moses, so he's not yet eighty. He's around seventy plus na si Tito Bonnie. I was with him last week also. Tito Boni has been, during the pandemic, his, he was limited to being at home. And I remember he decided to start a video, the little that he has, one message of the kingdom of God. He started doing TikTok. <laughs> Imagine, you know, hindi niya alam, sabi niya, oh, ba, ano, shoot me yung sarili mo, so, salita lang siya. And amazingly, when we were having, sabi ko sa kanya, Actually, ako kasi yung Facebook, kasi almost full na yung friends. Eh. Hindi ko na kayo na-add, sabi ko. Kasi I have 4,000 plus. I was, I was telling Tito Bonnie. Sabi ko, kamusta ba yung mga ano mo, yung ginagawa mo? Okay ba? Sulit ba? And sabi niya, actually, yung TikTok ko na account. Do you want to know ilan na yung followers ni Tito Bonnie sa TikTok? Ayaw niyo. Sige, anyway, let's close in prayer. A man who does not who's not concerned about what trending means, a man who's not concerned about how it reaches others, now has 100,000 followers in TikTok. Imagine! Nakakatawa because a lot of people want to trend. But those who are not concerned about it trend. And I know that the little that he has, a one message of the kingdom of God, God can multiply and use for his glory. And I'd like to say this, Tito Bonnie was talking to me about people who message him. And the messages are people who are truly hopeless in life. The messages that he receives are messages of Tito, nawala nang lahat. I want to end my life. What do I do? One message of the kingdom would actually mean life to people who feel like life is hopeless. Thank God that it is the Lord who can use our past and the little that we have for His glory. Amen? Sabi ni Tito Boni, I used him as an illustration last week when I preached in Makati, and this is what he said, now I, it makes sense. The people that message him are actually all younger than him. They're just looking for a dad to encourage them. Grabe, no? Praise God that God can use Tito Bonnie in what he's doing for the kingdom of God. God can use who we are and the little that we have to bring hope to others. More doubts from Moses. Di pa rin siya fully convinced. Moses continually doubts. He tells the Lord, Lord, in verse 10 of chapter 4, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. He tells this excuse that I'm not the right person. I don't even, I can't even speak well. I can't even, you know, he's, he's not that well um, first about speaking. And the Lord says, I, I like the re reply of the Lord. You can look it, look it, look at, look it up. Sabi niya, Lord, hindi ba ako naman ang gumawa? ng mouth mo, ng words. I'll be, be the one to give you words. And so the more that Moses gives this reason, the more that the Lord answers him. And the last, one of the last questions in verse 13, Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. 
Imagine, no? After the Lord doing this miracle, sabi niya, oh, what do you have? Pag nakita mo si Pharaoh, magiging aas yan, magiging... You're gonna do miracles. He even, the Lord even told him, if you put your hands in your cloak, magiging ano siya. So, the Lord was preparing him to do signs and wonders and his resolve was, Lord, just send someone else. I believe this is our concern. I think it's something that frightens us when we're asked to do something for the Lord. You know, the Lord might be talking to someone or most of you during the week and tells you, pag-pray mo siya. Na-experience na ba yun? Yung sinabi ni Lord sa inyo. Pag, eh, nandito pala si Brenda, yung pag-pray mo siya. What do we say? Kay Lord, Lord, sige. Hindi, kailangan niya marinig yung, ah, oh, pupunta pala ako. You know, sometimes we are fearful of our response only because we think it's up to us to encourage them. I hope you know that it is the Spirit of God that gives us the words that is very timely to the people that we pray for and respond to. The more doubts, the more the Lord answers. And I like this because what God was doing to Moses, and I like this back and forth now, you can read the entire story of Moses. You will see that how God was patient with Moses, fully convinced na si Moses, right? The Lord actually allowed him to experience that that the people and Pharaoh was also hard to convince. And God used Moses and his experience with the Lord to also fully convince these people who doubted the Lord. I like that because, and this is my second point, only fully convinced people can convince others of the Lord. Ang question ko sa atin is, are you fully convinced that the Lord is good? Are you fully convinced that God is great? That He is the most powerful? Are you fully convinced that He is the God who can create something out of nothing? Yes. Then, we are also the ones who can fully convince others. Ang problem is, kung di tayo fully convinced, pag sinare natin si Lord, ano sabi na, alam mo, mahal ka ni Lord. Bakit mo nasabi yan? Balikan kita next week. Are we fully convinced that we have a testimony to share that when we need God, He is there? People who are affected by the recent challenges need to hold on to something. But that something is not a thing. He's a person. Tayo ang magfully convinced sa kanila na kailangan nila si Lord. Are we fully convinced? Are we how do I say it? God wants His fully convinced people to convince others, people fully of His goodness and greatness. Amen? So, as we try to wrap it up, you have to understand, Moses had so much concerns, just like most of us. Lord, wag na lang ako. Lord, I can't speak. Lord, my past is not, you know, I'm not sure if I'm qualified to even do this. I only have a staff. I don't know what to do. In all the doubts, concerns, and worries, and fears of Moses, I think he actually missed out on the most, two important most messages of the Lord. So we go back to chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. And God said, I will be with you. Can you, read, can you say that? I will be with you. Can we go to chapter 3, verse 12? God said, I will be with you. I hope we know this, that when the Lord sends us, we're not sent alone. We will always be with Him. And even the Lord sometimes sends someone with us. No? In this case, He sends Aaron with Moses. It's the presence of the Lord that we always need to be reminded of. The second thing that most probably Moses overlooked because of all the concerns that he has is also found in verse 13 and 14. This was the question of Moses. Lord, if they ask me who you are, what name will I tell him? Do you remember that part? Verse 14 tells us that God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. Moses is reminded of a name. First time to be revealed to him. Sabi niya, my name is I am. And I love that because the word I am reminds us of who we are not. Who we are not is met by the great I am. And so in our inadequacies, in the things that we cannot do, in the things that we only have, when it is surrendered to the great I am, ang sinasabi po ni Lord is, your insufficiency will be complete when you are with me. The great I am. So I want to say, end with this statement. That the all-powerful God is with us and completes us in every mission He entrusts to us. I hope you know that the response that God wants from us is to say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. Because it's not about what we don't have and who we are. It's always about who He is and how powerful He is and He is partnering with us. Amen? The only game plan of the Lord to reach other humans is through humans. He uses us to be an encouragement to others. And so because He is all-powerful, we know that we can move in His power. Amen? Before I show you a video, I want to encourage you. How many of you want to be encouraged today? Yes? Paul talks about this. Paul said, Remember, 1 Corinthians 1, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that a few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose, and this is the encouragement, God chose things of the world considers foolish. Look at the person to your right. Look at the person to your left. Lord, thank you that we could actually be foolish people, but you can still use us anyway. God chose things of the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose the things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. Thank you, Lord, that the message of hope is for all of us regardless of who we are and what we have achieved. This is the God that we have, that he's willing to partner with us to use our lives as testimony to lead others for the hope that they need today. I'm going to ask you to watch this video, and this video is about Mark, one of our Victory Group leaders and volunteers. So I hope you guys get encouraged. Let's play the video of Mark. Huh? Hi, I'm Mark Anthony Togado. I'm a husband, a father of three. There's one Sunday asking who wants to surrender and accept God to be our Lord and Savior. That time I was diagnosed with a chronic kidney disease stage four. So me and my wife went to the in front of the altar and start hearing prayers of healing. Kuyojun asked me if I want to know God more deeper. I said yes right away. I had a one-to-one -one session with Kuyojun, likewise with my wife on her uh, victory group leader and my kids with their ENC coaches. CKD4, they called it, chronic kidney disease stage four. There's no heal about it. Still, malakas pa rin ako, which is the, uh, with the other people kasi nangihina na, na dialysis na. Last January, my kidney only works 26%. And keep on praying, praying, and we, with our victory group also. Yesterday, I had my EFGR. It comes at 29%. Tumaas siya talaga. And even my creatinine before, it's 269 Right now, it's 2.48. I still go to church every Sunday. I can still serve. Hindi pa rin ako nila dialysis. By the grace of God, my entire family was baptized on May 2023. He never leave me alone. He always there for me. He never leave me. He always my side. Even on my career, there's still a, a company who, who trusted. He gave me the position. Kasi yung mga sakit na katulad na meron ako, wala na dapat pressure. Kung hindi, tumataas lahat. So, in God's grace, even the pressure yung work ko, 
nagme-maintain siya, bumababa siya. And I thank God that every day I wake up in the morning. We, as we dedicate our lives to God, we bring back all the glory to Him. I serve in the tech ministry. My wife serves in experience ministry. My kids serve in the kids' church ministry because this is one of the ways we worship God. I think Mark's here. Did you see Mark? I saw him a while ago. Yeah, balang pagkadat si Mark and his family. God is good in the life of Mark, and we're continually believing for healing. And so the question is, what do we have? Some of you have time. Some of you have maybe a talent, a skill. Maybe you're called to, you know, speak. I believe God can use what you have for his glory. And last story, and this is the fist bump story. I like this because one of our ushers is not here. He's on a vacation. Kuya Jun, the one that Mark was talking about. Si Kuya Jun po, ang question is, what do you have in your hands? And what he has is a fist. And he uses this every Sunday. Pag may nakilala siya, nakita niya, fist bump. Ayan po si Kuya Jun. Every time may makita siya ng taong bago, fist bump. Pag nakausap niya niya last week, Fist bump. Pag di ka nag-reply, fist in the face. <laughs> and the fist bump pa din. So fist bump. Ganun siya, no? That's his trademark, fist bump. And I messaged Mark last night. And I was asking, Mark, di ba si Kuya Jun yun? I remember one of the testimonies Mark said, there's this guy who always did that fist bump sa akin. And that guy was Kuya Jun. And I believe the Lord can use the simplest thing that we have to lead people to Christ. And we have now a family serving the Lord. Amen? Palakpakan natin si Lord. Thank you, Lord. The question is, how do we respond today? I want to boldly say this. The message of hope that Moses brought, the message of promise that God would deliver them, the message that Moses brought to the people that one day you will be in the promised land, I want to boldly say this. You actually have a better message than Moses for others. The message that you have is even better than what Moses has. Why? Because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, the message that we have is not only hope in this world, but even hope in eternity. And that matters. Kanina, no, I was hearing Jello. Uh, exhort in our 9 a.m. in our in our sabi niya darating pa po ang challenges dadating pa si Karina ulit in a different name marami pa po tayong challenges na may experience this is the reality of a broken world but the message of of hope for eternity is something that i pray that we're willing to give out freely marami pong taong nangangailangan ng panginoon and we are that messengers. Amen? Can I ask everyone to stand? We're going to pray. I want to go back in my second point. I said a while ago that God wants His fully convinced people to convince others to be fully convinced of God's goodness and greatness. And I want to pray this prayer to some of you. You've been a believer Maybe it was a hard week for you. Maybe you've been praying to the Lord. And maybe today, at this very moment, and I won't judge you, maybe today you're not fully convinced that the God that we have is mindful of you. Feeling mo, no? Parang nakalimutan ka na, na set aside. Feeling mo, naging faithful siya sa iba, pero sa'yo hindi. I want you to know this truth. God is mindful of your misery. God has heard your cry and God is on his way. We can actually trust him even in his silence. For those of you who are or who have been battling a Karina kind of storm but not one day, it may actually be a long journey of healing might be a sickness might be for your family member same message Exodus 3 verse 7 the Lord has seen your misery 
He has heard your cry. He is concerned of your suffering. And He has come down to rescue you. Lord, allow us to be fully convinced once again that not only that you are a great and all-powerful God, but more so that you are a good God, that you are willing to rescue us, not only in our time of need, even before danger. Lord, you are a mindful God. Lord, send messengers our way. Lord, send someone to encourage us, someone to speak a blessing, someone to pray for us, someone to lift us up, someone, Lord, to carry the burden with us. Lord, do your work through others. And Lord, for the rest of us who are fully convinced, I want to encourage you, your lives, no matter how limited, no matter how you see it, parang konte, parang kulang, parang walang wala, the Lord can use that. And because He is a powerful God, this is His reminder, God can use what is little to become big for others. Lord, I pray that not only do you use all of us, including me, Lord God, Lord, I pray that we bring this message of hope everywhere we go. As we send them out to be salt and light, Lord, as we send them out to bring this good news of hope to a broken world who needs hope today, Lord, I pray that you give them the right words. Lord, you multiply what they're willing to give. Lord, you are a God who is in control and you are a God who can do wonders. Lord, we are expectant of the work that you will do through your people. Lord, bless them, provide for them. I want to say this. If you have been affected by the storm, can you just raise your hand? Your business, your family, your house, just raise your hand. We're, we want to pray for you. This is who we are as a church. Come on, just raise your hand. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Let's raise your hand. Come on. I know some of you don't be shy. We all need prayers. If you're beside them, can you just lay your hands on them? And this is our declaration as a church to those who are affected by this storm. Lord, I pray that whatever is lost, you will bring back. Not by their mind. Lord, right now, they're thinking about ways. Lord, remind them to be at peace that it is your way and not theirs. Lord, just like how you have moved in the life of Charles, recover it, Lord God. Lord, bring it back, Lord God, a hundredfold for those of have whatever they have lost, Lord God. Lord, I pray that they will trust you. Lord, we pray for breakthroughs. Lord, we pray that they will see your hand in every step of the way. Lord, you are a gracious God. Lord, allow them to declare that you are a faithful God more and more today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lastly, before I send you out, fist bump mo muna yung katabi niyo, fist bump. Let that be a reminder that God can use anything to lead people to God. Amen? God bless you all. See you next week. If you need prayers, please come to us here in front. We'd love to pray for you.